Hello, everyone. I am Herberto Kwajawit, Senior Lecturer in Computer Science at the University of Lincoln. And today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, chatbots. So here we go. Imagine yourself in a trip abroad. And one of the things that you have to do uh, within this trip is to uh, look for some food. So it's lunchtime. And um, in this particular case of the picture, uh, this, this um, food shop is in Germany. But let's imagine that you are in a country such as Brazil, <clears throat> just for illustration purposes. And, um, and, 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 and this is the thing. Um, the person that will attend you has very limited uh, English skills. And <clears throat> your Portuguese skills, they are also very limited or close to none. So why is this important? That's, that's because um, this is more or less uh, sometimes the scenario that chatbots are uh, exposed to, where, where um, the, the, the skills, uh, the conversational skills uh, may not be um, um, great for the chatbot, let's put it that way, and, uh, and conversations may be not as straightforward as, as those that we have in, in, in our native uh, languages or mother tongues. So uh, in this scenario, you have to, uh, as you can imagine, choose the type of bread that you want, choose the ingredients that you want, whether you want your bread to be toasted or not, uh, whether you want cheese or not, and, and so on and so forth. And you have to, to, to do your payment as well. Uh, and there will be a number of questions and answers that, that one will go through. Uh, during a dialogue of this type. And, um, and again, uh, the, 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 the conversational skills of each comparison, um, they are not in, uh, they are not same, they are not at the same level as those uh, uh, native speakers of the same language, right? Okay, so similarly, <clears throat> now you are in a different trip. Now you're in, in China. <clears throat> and this time you want to uh, have some dinner. So you're in a, a nice restaurant looking for, for some peaceful meal, uh, possibly with a friend uh, or a colleague or um, yeah, uh, somebody that you know. And um, <clears throat> you have to, same, same here, the person that you will interact with has limited skills uh, of English and um, and your skills of Chinese, they are also very limited or or even none. Nonetheless, you have to to go through a dialogue in order to, to order some food, the food that you wish, right? Food and drink or drinks. Uh... So um, <clears throat> again, this is the, the type of scenarios where uh, chatbots um, are exposed to. Uh, these are the, the, the sort of settings that uh, chatbots, um, they, they, they don't have a straight uh, forward conversations with, um, uh, with people, depending on the, on the, on the, on the situation. If, the, if what the person says is very, very simple and straightforward, such as uh, um, um, set up a timer, and uh, maybe this is not a, a, um, a, a complex, um, uh, part of a complex interaction and um, and and the, the scenarios that I commented they, they help to to value more uh, the conversational skills that we have and when we have to go through these situations we have to to make use of our uh, sort of chatbot that we have in our brains okay so now let me uh, move to a different scenario. This time, um, you want to, um, uh, to book a car service. Your car needs some maintenance and, um, and you want it to, to be serviced. 
during the week, um, there are uh, workers that could attend your call, uh, but how about, or, or even um, during working hours, how about your non-working hours? In the evenings or, or, or the weekends, Saturday afternoon or Sunday, uh, there's nobody to attend your call. <clears throat> and this is one example where chatbots could, could be, chatbots could be useful. Uh, they can work um, all the time and um, they can um, not necessarily replace humans, but they can uh, extend the services that, uh, that companies such as this one uh, uh, um, uh, provide, uh, well, the services they provide and, uh, and chatbots can attend calls, take, take uh, more, more customers, and uh, and that's uh, that's uh, that could be a a useful um, scenario where, where where a chatbot can be can be definitely uh, useful. <clears throat> now, so this is what I'm going to tell you about. I'm going to give you my own personal definition of a chatbot. I'm going to tell you about classifications of chatbots. Um, how can we create those chatbots? I'm going to give you an example. Uh, I'm going to go through a piece of code that will tell us how to how to um, um, create those chatbots so they can make some decisions during their interactions. Uh, I'm going to tell you also how how advanced are chatbots and, and, and how the future looks like. Some recommended readings. And if I have time, I will show you a video of, a, of a, um, a uh, robot chatbot uh, of some uh, interactions that that uh, that I've been working on in the last uh, few weeks. Okay, so it's, here's my definition of a chatbot. It is a computer system that engages in either task-oriented conversations or, or open-ended conversations. The 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 food shops and the the um, the, the car service scenarios that, that I mentioned, they are task-oriented scenarios. But if I could uh, want to, to chat uh, to, to, to my chatbot about just, just anything, then that could be an open-ended conversation. And that's also possible. Um, <clears throat> now, these conversations can use text, speech, and some other modalities, such as here we have a robot moving its arms, moving its head, and um, and that's why we can have this type of this type of chatbots or these others that you are more familiar with, that um, that you mostly use uh, commands, um, and you can have also a text space or a combination of of, of text and speech. One month I, I was. Uh, to, uh, trying out the, the chatbot of uh, of our university <laughs> in, in the last few days to see how advanced it is, um, and um, you may want to to give it a try yourself. It uh, still looks like work in progress, but nonetheless, uh, it's good to see that the university has a a, a chatbot or that they they plan to have something useful. <clears throat> um, okay, so having said that. Chatbots operate on a number of services, and surprisingly, um, they operate on mobile phones, smart watches, um, smart speakers. Um, they also operate on our cars and robots. Um, the last one is not very uh, common, but um, yeah, they can they can also um, uh, make use of chatbots. Um, to interact with us. Now, here are the types of chatbots. I did look for, for classifications of chatbots. Uh, I did search for this and, and there are uh, different types of classifications depending on, on who uh, whose opinion is, is this. So, so here are three different opinions. Um, and here are the links for those three different opinions. Uh, they think about uh, these th three types of chatbots, simple chatbots, intelligent chatbots, and hybrid chatbots. Um, <clears throat> I agree with these two, but this idea of simple chatbots, it is ambiguous. 
and that's because either this or this uh, can be simple and um, and it's unclear uh, the difference between this and and these other ones so so be careful when you see um, classification of, of, of chatbots. I've seen chatbots of, of some companies that they have really complex um, uh, flow charts that follow the, 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 the interactions and they are certainly not in this category. But with this, uh, with the person that wrote this classification, I think they meant uh, rule-based chatbots as is in this case. Um, so in this other uh, classification, so there are two types of chatbots, rule-based, and, and this, uh, this person uh, put those uh, chatbots as neural network-based. And this is also not totally true because um, I think what, what these people meant um, more is like AI-based uh, chatbots. And uh, because neural networks is a more narrow uh, subfield within artificial intelligence that that may be uh, not uh, not uh, completely um, correct. So um, given that AI is, is is larger and encompasses multiple fields such as natural language processing, such as machine learning, such as uh, computer vision, um, uh, knowledge representation and reasoning and, and so on. So, so therefore that's why it should be a more like a AI uh, chatbots. And <clears throat> within this one, um, there are two types, retrieval based and generative. Retrieval based, what they do is they look for a sentence as, as a response, a full sentence that exists in, in the training data, for example, and uh, and down, and the task of of the of the chatbots is to choose the best response at any point during the, the interaction. And generative, uh, the generative type, uh, they generate one word at a time, instead of looking for the best sentence, uh, they generate one word at a time. So the latter have the potential to be more um, uh, intelligent because they could generate sentences that are not in the training data. Uh, but the former, they, they have the advantage of generating language that is more uh, grammatically correct. These ones are prone to generating grammatical, uh, ungrammatical uh, outputs. So there are pros and cons of each. These ones, they are, um, they are limited because if the rules do not um, um, have support for, for what the person has said, said during the interaction, then the rules will not be very useful. And, and rule-based chatbots, they basically follow a, some sort of, here, here this, this other classification, they, they say a decision tree, but I think they also mean, mean the type of simple chatbots that they are rule-based and they can follow a, some sort of tree-like structure, but we can see it as a, as a, a diagram, uh, as a, as a diagram uh, where we can just traverse the, through the through the branches, uh, uh, depending on the on the conversation. Okay, and um, and in this uh, other classification, the the type of AI chatbots they are framed as uh, NLP chatbots. Okay, so. Let's uh, summarize um, the, the type of chatbots. Simple chatbots, they are actually uh, typically in the role-based category, although notice that they may not be simple. Um, intelligent chatbots, they can also be referred to as neural network based or machine learning based or NLP based and um, <clears throat> If, if they are AI based, they can be uh, retrieval based or generative. If you want the best of uh, um, both worlds, uh, AI and rule based, then we can have hybrid chatbots that, that combine them both. 
and um, <clears throat> and these are the the, the types of chatbots um, and different different organizations different individuals could um, could be willing to have uh, one of these type of chatbots I, I I like the idea of hybrid chatbots because uh, uh, they can they can certainly be trainable they can become intelligent but they could also uh, incorporate some some uh some prior knowledge uh, that can be uh useful so that a chat with the, don't really have to learn everything right it could be provided with some 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 knowledge uh already building knowledge okay um here's an example architecture of a of a chatbot and in particular is these part uh, the middle and the right hand side so a chatbot needs some sort of language understanding okay to to understand what has been said whether it's via uh, text speech or, or multiple modalities and that meaning has to be passed to something that we call a dialogue manager that makes the decisions uh, at the um, meaning level the dialogue manager may consult some some sort of dialogue history, some sort of knowledge, existing knowledge, and um, and then it makes a decision. Um, again, this this can this action can be seen as, as some sort of meaning. Uh, this is an input meaning. This is an output meaning, and um, and then there is some sort of language generator that has to 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 provide a response. <clears throat> has to generate a, a, a word sequence. This word sequence can be um, uh, uh, well, initially it's a text-based uh, word sequence, but um, uh, one can use a speech synthesizer to 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 provide a speech, or or even more, uh, one can use uh, uh, some motor commands in case we have an, an embodied uh, chatbot. <clears throat> okay. So here is an example of an open-ended dialogue. In case um, it wasn't clear. So one could have a uh, chit chat conversations of, uh, you know, uh, how are you doing today? And uh, talking about uh, uh, things that we have just done, things that we like. Uh, for the moment, let's ignore this R uh, or these brackets. Um, uh, so one person, uh, here's, one conversion here, here is uh, in, in, in uh, black, um, uh, letters and the other uh, with blue uh, um, letters or words um, and um, as you can see there is no clear task here that's why they are called open-ended um, these dialogue um, I put this, these sentences uh, in red because they are sentences that do not make sense if you if you go through the dialogue briefly um, those sentences in red, uh, I chose them randomly from other dialogues in order to to illustrate uh, a dialogue that doesn't doesn't make sense. Why did I do that? Because I wanted to teach my chatbot uh, how to choose sentences, uh, and and the idea is that the chatbot has to distinguish uh, from um, human sentences to those that are not human. Um, so here's an example of a task-oriented dialogue where the idea is to, to look for, for accommodation and um, and yeah uh, I'm, I'm not going to read through this uh, through this dialogue I just want to, to show you how uh, a task-oriented dialogue looks like uh, these dialogues again can be uh, text-based or speech-based. Now let's see. Let's start to talk about how do they, uh, how how chatbots work. How can we actually build them? Okay. <clears throat> so here are two architectures. One of them from one of my recent papers, and here's another another one that I will come uh, uh, in a moment. Uh, in order to decide the meaning that we want to choose uh, next, we have to look at, at the history of what has been said so far in the dialogue uh, by both conversions. Okay? 
some people may take only the last uh, the last couple of uh, sentences that have been conveyed in the in interaction um, but for example in in our study we took the whole dialogue of what uh, has been said so far and there's a neural network that has to digest all that text okay I has to extract some sort of uh, something that we call features um, in our case, uh, uh, in recent machine learning um, 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 techniques, we just want to work with, with numbers, whether this is in, inputs or, or, or features or outputs, everything is number. So, so we want to extract some numbers that describe the inputs. Now, similarly with, the, with text, uh, we also have speech, right? And we have another neural network that digests um, um, <clears throat> sequences of of, um, of audio frames and gives us uh, some some additional features. And we use these two types of features in order to to decide what to do next in in the interaction. <clears throat> um, and from this, one can one can uh, uh, use a language generator to uh, to decide what to do next. Um, so here is an example of a language generator that um, is, is, a, is a neural network that <clears throat> uh, receives some some features. Could have been um, uh, some uh, features from here, but in this case. Um, uh, there are different inputs here, as we can see. There, uh, there is an image, and there is text, um, and there are neural networks that digest those inputs in order to provide some features to this language generator that we also call uh, call a decoder. And um, in this case, words uh, are generated one by one. So this would be the case of um, a generative. Uh, chatbot okay all right so so this is roughly um uh, how do we uh, um how do how do chatbots look internally and the type of chatbots that i'm describing to you when i look at the at the types of chatbots is more this type also this other type and obviously this 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 other one so the type of AI chatbots, that's the one that I'm focusing on in, in this talk. Uh, <clears throat> now, in order to, to make these decisions of what meaning to, to, uh, to choose next so that we can uh, generate some language, um, <clears throat> this is the scenario that we have. So the chatbot is in an environment, right? So that's why he, we, here we have the world. And, um, and from this environment, there is, um, there is something that we call state that describes what has happened. And in this case, our state, um, it, is, um, it could be features from uh, uh, text-based features and audio-based features, okay? So that could be uh, the content that we could have inside S that describes our state. My agent or my chatbot, in this case, it will have to choose a, an action, okay? Uh, in, in this case, we call it dialogue act, uh, or it could, be, it could be a sentence. It has to choose a sentence uh, as a response. It has to choose a response. And whether the response is is in some form of of meaning or or in the form of a a, a, a whole word sequence uh, that could be seen as a, as an action. And um, <clears throat> if my agent observes some some uh, some inputs, and and uh, then it has to make decisions by choosing actions. So, uh, and again, the actions, there may be a, a set of uh, meanings available or they may be uh, available as a whole set of 
of potential responses. And the task of the agent is to choose the, the best the best action, the best response. So <clears throat> in order to do that, I need a topic called policy learning. And this is a topic that is um, uh, very typical in, in robotics, for example. So a robot can learn to behave in its environment. Uh, but we also use it for, for, for chatbots <clears throat> because we want our chatbot to learn to behave. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so here's a, a definition of an agent. An agent behave, behaves in its environment using a policy, okay, which is a strategy, a mapping from state to actions, so that um, again the, the robot can or the agent can 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 choose the best action. Uh, at each state. Training an agent means finding the best policy, the policy that achieves the highest reward over time. So in this scenario, the agent receives a reward every time it chooses an action, okay? So now let me go back to these conversations. That's why uh, I have here uh, R with a plus one for, for those sentences that, that, that make sense as stated by humans and those that make no sense as uh, chosen randomly. Uh, again, because I want, to, uh, I want my agent to distinguish uh, uh, human sentences from those that are not human. And, um, and then I'm going to I'm going to try to train a policy or a strategy in order to to illustrate this a bit more clearly let me go through an intuitive example uh, in this case is an is a navigation task and, and and this is the task so i'm going to explore only reinforcement learning here i have an agent that wants to go from an initial state top left corner to a gold state, okay? Here is the gold state. Um, <clears throat> this gray or shaded uh, um, cells, they are walls, the agent cannot go through there. The states are locations as, uh, as uh, coordinates, X and Y, X and Y coordinates. And the actions are, are only four available at each state, uh, up, down, left, and right. So that the robot can, the agent can move uh, around its um, environment. <clears throat> the robot cannot go out of, of, its, of its world. Um, and um, there are multiple, multiple ways to get to the, um, to the goal. One can go through here, one can go through here as well, and one can go through here, through here as well. Um, the idea here is that aging has to, to figure out its own way. Um, <clears throat> and what we're providing is a set of states, a set of actions, and we are going to give some uh, rewards, reward values. Um, in, in the majority of cases, there will be a reward of zero. There are some cases where uh, landing in these states, it will mean uh, that the agent will get a minus one, a negative reward, okay? Um, and uh, reaching the goal state um, gives a, a positive reward, a plus one. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> so let's have a look at, uh, at an example program. So I wrote a small class for, for you to illustrate you uh, within, uh, within this uh, example. And um, this is a clear example of, of an AI program, AI solution, okay? so. Here's my agent. <clears throat> its grid world is a matrix of 
uh, is a two dimension and two dimensionality vector, 10 times 10. I have uh, actions, they are up, down, left, and right. And I have something uh, that we call a Q table. I should call, uh, I should have called this Q table, but I'm going to, to just leave it as, as, as Q. And um, <clears throat> it will store values for each of the locations and, um, and and each of the actions. So it will have 10 times 10 times 4 values. Each of those values will represent the importance um, of a location and an action. So when the agent has calculated all those values, what the agent has to do in order to, to um, to go from the, the, the initial location to the goal is just to choose the actions with the highest value in each of the states, okay? So um, if the agent is here, it will have to, to, to see, okay, what is the value of going up, down, left, and right? The one with the highest value, uh, it, will, it will choose. Uh, it could be either right or, 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 or down, for example. And um, once it's down, it will it will decide what to do uh, next. The action that got the highest value. Okay, so um, I'm gonna run this for uh, maybe just three thousand three thousand episodes. This should be more than enough. Um, um, <clears throat> and I have a number of. of other values here that I'm not going to 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 go in through det uh, to de uh, through detail, but um, <clears throat> here's the thing: um, I'm initializing the walls with uh, not a number, so that I, I I don't have to calculate any values in these uh, shaded areas, and those other ones um, <clears throat> uh, they will have either a minus one or plus one for those. Uh, locations that have a, a reward different than zero. For all the others, we we have initialized uh, um, or 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 Q uh, with zeros, or, or um, and and also or, or grid world with zeros. Um, <clears throat> okay, so. Um, I have a function that will choose an action, um, sometimes uh, randomly and sometimes using uh, the, the, the best values. I have a function that also gives me the, the next state. Given given an action, it will it will um, give me the next um, coordinates. In this case, for example, if I'm uh, if I'm here and I choose uh, right, then it will give me uh, the, the next state will be this one. Okay. <clears throat> so here's the, the, the core uh, block of uh, the program. I'm going to train this agent for a number of episodes. Okay. Um, a fixed number of episodes. And um, T is going to be a time, S is going to be my initial state. Um, it is um, the top left corner. And <clears throat> I'm going to, to go through a loop uh, until uh, my agent reaches a gold state. When it reaches the gold state, it will uh, uh, terminate this loop. And, um, and 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 it will start an, a new um, we call it episode but basically a, an episode is basically going from the from the initial uh, state to to the goal uh, or until a number of episodes um, so in this case until until it reaches the, the goal state <clears throat> and it will go through this many times until um, it has uh, finished the the actual number of, of, of episodes or, or in our case, navigation tasks. <clears throat> okay, so uh, in this loop, what the agent has to do, remember what we have in our uh, uh, illustration here. The agent has to choose an action and 
produces an action using this function. Um, the agent observes a state, okay? And here I have uh, my function, I, I use my function uh, next state. Uh, the agent uh, receives a reward, okay? I use the values that I have specified in, in, a, in a grid world, which can be zeros, minus one, or, or there's a one value with one. Um, <clears throat> and this, this will have to be done um, before the agent tries to learn anything, okay? Now, here's how the agent learns. That happens in this, in this block. This is the, the, where the magic happens. And this is the, the particular uh, line where the magic happens. <clears throat> <clears throat> to calculate those values in, in, in that uh, uh, Q function that I was commenting, um, we are going to, um, to, to calculate values or the importance of an action in that state using the current value, okay? <clears throat> the old estimate, we call it, a, a step size. And, um, uh, and, and here we have, this is the, the, uh, uh, the target um, uh, value, and this is the, the old estimate. And using this, this formula, will allow us to, to, uh, to again calculate how important it is each of those actions in each of the states. Um, so as the, as the agent navigates its environment is calculating the importance of being uh, in that state and having taken the, the action that they, that they just took. <laughs> And given that this is done many times, uh, all the calculations will end up uh, telling us what are the most valuable actions in each of the uh, in each of the states. Um, <clears throat> so here I just accumulate my my uh, number of steps to know how long. The, 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 the interactions are, and here uh, I also uh, uh, accumulate uh, the rewards so that I know how much reward the agent has got, and uh, and I plot I plot uh, uh, my results. So so here's an example run. Uh, here are some uh, learning curves for you to see what the agent has, has learned here. Let me try to make this bigger. Uh -huh. um, so what does this mean? The plot on top, it, tell, it, it, it is illustrating uh, the, the amount of steps on average that it took at, at the beginning of training and until, until the end. Remember that I run my, my, uh, eight, uh, my, my program for 3,000 episodes or 3,000 navigation uh, tasks. The more the agent was trained, the more efficient it got in reaching uh, the goal uh, as starting from the from the initial state. And as we can see here, and here's the and the top plot is the lower the better, and the, the, the bottom plot is the higher the better. So here's the average reward. We want agents that reach um, as much reward as possible over time. And here's an example of uh, of, of an agent that, that improves its behavior over time. An intelligent agent is expected to improve its behavior as, as it interacts with its environment. Uh, and, and as we can see here, uh, the, the agent is improving, improving, improving. Um, how many steps does it take? So, uh, looks like around 16, here you have uh, 17, but that's because there is a small amount of noise here. This is the amount of randomness. Um, <clears throat> so sometimes it may not be the, the most um, um, the most accurate, but let's, let's count uh, roughly how many steps do we require to get from the 
from the initial state to the goal. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17. So roughly that's that's more or less the number that, uh, that it requires. Um, now, uh, here I'm printing my, my uh, uh, grid world uh, matrix uh, and and this is the, the the cube function that I was telling you about. These are the values that were calculated um, as the the, the, the uh, in order to extract the, the 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 importance of each action in each state. So these um, these matrix over here it will be for the action up this other one uh, for the action down, and this other one for left, and this other one for uh, for right. So let me choose. Uh, let me let me let me see just the, the very first state. In the very first state, so I have this this value, uh, 0 0.85, 0 0.86, 0 0.87, 0 0.85. Uh, and here's uh, this is also 86, but uh, which one is is is, is larger? Uh, so 84, 93. So it looks like this one at, at the bottom is the the, the best action for my uh, agent. So uh, remember that the, the last one is for the action right. So when my agent learned is that in this location is going to choose uh, the action right. Uh, so, it, and it's uh, first iteration, it will uh, uh, land in, in, in this state. And as it goes through the through the through the loop, it will it will um, uh, get to the goal eventually. So this is. A simple example of a reinforcement learning agent, but um, <clears throat> in the case of robots or chatbots, our agents are more complex. Here, the amount of uh, input features are, <clears throat> are are quite simple; are just the coordinates. Um, the amount of actions they are only four. Uh, in in in, in, in chatbots and robots that carry out uh, more realistic tasks, um, the, 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 the actions are much more complex and therefore um, the implementation is more challenging than, than, than this program. Uh, it's just a 100 line uh, program, but, uh, but the, the, the fundamentals are, 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 are very similar. And, um, and again, this is an example of an, an AI solution that, uh, that learn to behave in its environment. And it's found out how to behave in our environment on its own by discovering what actions to choose uh, at each point in, in its interaction. So that's a, uh, that's uh, that's quite nice, and um, <clears throat> I have a piece of code in the web that one can try out. To it's a little bit outdated, but I will uh, update it. I will update it uh, as time permits. Uh, but nonetheless, one can use it uh, to 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 play with. And, and in this case, that's that's a chatbot using deep reinforcement learning, reinforcement learning with neural networks. This, this is uh, roughly the illustration that we want with the, the, the type of chatbots that, that I typically investigate. So people say something, um, um, usually via uh, speech, uh, and there are uh, neural networks digesting uh, those inputs. And we have a number of algorithms, but uh, it turns out that um, we still don't have um, we seem to, to, to still need better algorithms because um, one can get some uh, solutions, some reasonable solutions, but uh, a thing that one can do better. So, so one of the things that one can do is try to find out better algorithms, better um, 
uh, ways of, of representing uh, features um, and um, better ways of um, training agents uh, and, and, and so on. Let me try to uh, just show you briefly three dimensions. In one dimension, I have a simulated system that um, that um, that it doesn't have to even interact with with real people. And on the other hand, I have systems that they are interact with um, with end users, actual end users. Uh, so, so this could be more uh, of uh, systems such as um, at the type of chatbots that you may have in your smart speakers. Uh, but how, how about the other dimensions? Um, <clears throat> high generalization, in machine learning, we, 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 we call agents with uh, high generalization when they are able to, to, to deal with, uh, with uh, uh, unexpected situations, they are, uh, they are uh, able to, to, to do well uh, with, uh, with unexpected situations. And um, if, if an agent is able to, to do that, and then it will have high generalization, all the ones it will not. Um, and, um, and another dimension is, um, let's imagine uh, that we have um, self-learning self on, on the one hand, uh, and, and, and at this end, and there is no self-learning. Uh, over here. That means the agent uh, is fixed and, and it doesn't improve its behavior any, anymore. For example, I could train an agent, deploy it, and then it, it will not learn anymore. Um, uh, on, and, and over here, I have an agent that, that is, uh, is, is improving um, uh, itself. Um, <clears throat> the, the research work that has been done is, is roughly within this blue area that, yeah, there are some, some deployments, maybe, maybe where one can stretch uh, these, these, uh, these, uh, these blue part a little bit more if, if one can think of uh, some uh, real deployed systems. Um, <clears throat> but there, there are levels of um, generalizations, they are not so high and their levels of uh, um, uh, self-learning, they are also not, not so high either, or they, they, they are not. Uh, so the type of <clears throat> systems that I believe we will see in the future are those systems that will go uh, uh, away in these three different dimensions, and that's something that I would call uh, very advanced systems. Okay, so I have a brief question there for you. If you uh, are able to go uh, through this uh, QR code, please try to scan it. And there are three simple questions. If you if you can uh, briefly answer them, that could be great. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to show you now. Oh. Here are some uh, example recent publications that I uh, have been involved in. Uh, one that I wrote a couple, a couple of, published a couple of years ago, um, together with some 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 colleagues and and some that I have co-authored. This one is actually appearing in the proceedings this week. So this is this is a very recent work with a, a PhD student uh, at the University of the Vast Country. And, 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 and here's another paper that I wrote with, uh, with a PhD student at the uh, University of Southern Queensland. Uh, and it's, uh, it's currently under review and, and we hope to, to, to get it published sometime soon. Um, <clears throat> um, you can search uh, for, for, for the titles uh, uh, in the web and, and they are the, the PDFs uh, are, are available for you in case you want to have a look at. Now, I'm going to show you a, a, a chatbot robot uh, and, 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 and see what you, th what you think. Um, so let me remove my...
to to show you my my video um, but I can just briefly tell you what it was about um, it is a, a robot <clears throat> in a hospital environment interviewing patients uh, as if you could um, uh, come to 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 see a a clinician and and sometimes you have to go through through a questionnaire so they can assess the the severity of your case and 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 they can um channel you through the through the right um medical procedure and uh, and this robot um is playing the role of the a clinician and um I believe we have been very successful in, in in this type of dialogues. Unfortunately, I'm not able to show them to you, but um, um, I hope to show them to you in the near future, in in a, in a, in, a, in some other talk, where I will be able I will be able to elaborate in more detail. I have couple of minutes, a few minutes for questions. So if there's any question, please um, go ahead. Hello, folks. Any question? Hello, hello. Hello. Can somebody give me a sign that you are listening to me? Okay, so let's see if anyone did fill the, the, the questionnaire. Um, we have a couple of responses. Yes, um, uh, they went better than expected. They went as expected. Um, um, that is um, that is nice to see. That's a, a, a positive um, uh, outcome so far. <laughs> I hope that um, if you are watching this offline. You will be able to still fill the questionnaire so that we can accumulate the, the, the stats and see some some more significant numbers for uh, but for the moment this is encouraging and uh, I thank you for for your attention uh, so if you are building a chatbot or plan to build one uh, please get in touch I believe I will be able to tell you uh, some useful comments uh, uh, or I may even be able to, to suggest a, a potential solution for you, for your case. Thank you and goodbye.